Here at Monticello, we have a rich history of beer and brewing, and there were many people involved in the brewing process during Jefferson's time. Martha Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson's wife, brewed batches of small beer, likely with the help of enslaved workers. After her death, an enslaved man named Peter Hemmings became the primary brewer at Monticello. He was trained by an English brewer named Joseph Miller, and by 1815, Hemmings had taken over the beer brewing operations. Recognized locally as an accomplished brewer, he brewed up to 300 gallons of beer twice a year until Jefferson's death in 1826. In honor of the history of brewing at Monticello and in partnership with Blue Mountain Brewery, we are thrilled to announce a new beer, Monticello Mountain Ale. Looking to develop a beer for Monticello, we looked long and hard for a local brewery, and we wanted someone who had similar goals and values. And when I met Taylor Smack, I knew Blue Mountain was the perfect fit. His history as being a pioneer of craft beer making in Virginia, like Monticello, Blue Mountain values sustainability, investing in local community, and creating a high quality product. Well, Blue Mountain's done a number of collaborations. Blue Mountain focuses on agricultural and kind of the rural side of Virginia. So doing something with Monticello seemed a really natural and exciting fit for us. We have a number of products made with ingredients grown at Monticello, and I am delighted to say that Monticello Mountain Ale is one of them. Honey from Monticello's own bees and hives is part of this delicious recipe. Honey struck me as particularly interesting news because it's got a long history in, in beer and alcoholic beverages. It's 100% fermentable. It can offer some local flavor. You know, it's got a terroir. It's got a, a little bit of a flavor of, from the land and it's completely authentic. Monticello Mountain Ale is not an historical exercise. We're not trying to recreate exactly something that, that Jefferson or, or Peter Hemmings would have been brewing at the time. But these are all traditional brewing ingredients that would have existed in Jefferson's time. They were just very hard to come by in America. Our Monticello Mountain Ale starts in the morning with preparing our barley malt. They are crushed up, milled up. This is an aromatic malt right here. Slightly different inside, almost like a little orangey. They all look different. First thing is you just come down. You will turn this on. So that is now milling what is the rest of the copper down into the grist case. In the mash tun, the milled up barley malt is mixed with hot water and enzymes that are naturally present in the barley husk convert the starches into simpler sugars that will later be fermented in the alcohol. So this right here is my flow meter. I can both click through and see, this is what my flow rate per minute is. So I'm doing about 21 gallons a minute. And so this is what I use to keep really keep track of that ratio of water to, to grain. I want all this wet grain to be floating in suspension. I don't want it to sink and compact at the bottom. If it's not all in a really nice floating slurry, then it'll compress and I won't be able to drain my liquid out. So getting the, the even mixture of water to grain as you go, the rakes, mixing it up well, is crucial. 
we're converting starches that are in the multi grain into sugars. And that's really what James is doing up here, creating yeah. a sugary liquid that later the yeast will eat. When he's done, it's not actually beer at that point. The joke is brewers don't really make a beer, we just make food for yeast. And then we control how it turns it into beer. So this is called Brutan B that helps the proteins to bond together. It ends up having a clearer beer in the end process. This is a calcium chloride and calcium sulfate. They're both water treatments for the mash water. And this is phosphoric acid. It's a pH balancer. It really helps with your sugar extractions. The sweet juice that we've created in there, it's actually called wort, W-O-R-T. This is just milled up barley that's been mixed with hot water. It is drawn through the tight screen, leaving all the grain behind, moved over to our brew kettles, and at this point we begin a 90-minute boil where we add our hops. Grain is our sugar source. That's the food. Hops, they are purely bittering. They're there to counteract the sweetness from the milk. And this really comes down to where you want the bittering and how much. The earlier you add it, it's really just bittering. The later you add it, you're actually getting flavors like sometimes citrus, fruits. At the very end of the boil, we're using honey from hives at Monticello. Though the honey is very fermentable, we actually are, are keeping a little bit of the flavor and aroma in. So here we have about a gallon of honey from Monticello. Um, it came directly from there. And we're going to add it to the end of our, we're done boiling our kettle, so we're going to add it to our whirlpool. We're getting ready to empty this kettle into the fermenter. So, we add it at the last minute, that way we don't boil out any of that good honey flavors. I'm going to slowly add it in while I'm pulling in the kettle. And it's getting mixed up in there, and then it'll rest for about 15 minutes. Once the boil is complete, we cool it down by forcing the hop to work through a heat exchanger and into uh, one of our big stainless steel fermenting vessels holds about 4,000 gallons of beer. So we're gonna cool it down as we send it. So I'm getting ready to send it to James over there. I'm gonna monitor the temperature and once the temperature is right, he's gonna go into the tank and he's gonna add the yeast. I got wort in my side glass. All right, Tim's good, you can go in. All right, so now he's gonna get lifted up and he's gonna pitch the yeast. First thing is just uh, sanitation is everything around here. Thank you. 
after about a week or 10 day fermentation, the beer is uh, cooled down and cold aged, which really helps to round out the beer. It's moved over to the bottling line and put in the bottles for everyone to enjoy. Monticello Mountain Ale is in the ale family, and so we're thinking of something with a little bit more flavor, a little bit more heft, but it's basically just a really good, middle-of-the-road, drinkable beer. Visitors to Monticello can try our beer at Monticello, and they can even pick up a six-pack to take home. We're also going to be featuring Monticello Mountain Ale at our uh, three breweries. We have not just Blue Mountain Brewery, but also Blue Mountain Barrel House and South Street Brewery in Charlottesville. Now that it is here, we are so excited. It's an incredible beer and we cannot wait for everyone to try Monticello Mountain Ale. As I was driving up, I was peering out the window looking for the Tufton Farms where the honey came from. My entire brewing team was really happy with the way the honey actually does come through in this beer. It, you know, it ferments and provides a little bit of the strength, but just leaves a beautiful, sweet touch to it too. Even though we don't have records of Peter Hemmings using honey in Monticello beer, by 1814, grain grown on the plantation was used for malt in the brewing process. More than 200 years later, we're excited to bring locally produced beer back to Monticello. It's exciting that we're sitting here now having our Monticello Mountain Ale. It's Amen. tasty. It's fabulous. Congratulations and thank you, Taylor. Well, thank you guys. It's been wonderful. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.